I would say if you're thinking about listing, you got to list. You have to list because in my MLS, I can do something called reverse prospecting. And I can tell you right now. Hi, friends. Welcome to Getting Your Real Estate Life Together. I'm Tracy Hicks with All Things Real Estate. And today I'm excited to meet my kind of new friend, Carrie. Now, do you go by Carrie or Carrie Joe? I go by Carrie because I'm an identical twin. People know me by Carrie Joe and Mina Joe, but you had to only go through school through kindergarten. <laughs> to, to, to call you Carrie Joe? Yes. <laughs> That's awesome. Well, thanks for being here, Carrie. I'm so excited. We met in person finally at NAR, but we've known each other through Marky. Uh, if you don't know Marky, Marky Lemons Ryle, people, you got to go check her out. But Carrie, tell us a little bit. Well, I was going to start going into what you were doing, but give me a little bit of background on uh, you and Marky first, because that's how I met you and that's how I connected with you. So tell me what you guys were doing. And then I want to back up and hear your story and, and kind of what's up with you. Okay. So I've been in the real estate um, license business since 2001 and Marky Lemons and I met somewhere around 2012 and 13, because we were both in a working group and she was already an instructor. And so we were, we were working on a project to help our multiple listing service come up with ways to market our listings on social media. And I was like, I heard about this lady and she, her husband would not let her go anywhere. Um, well, he would let her drive, but he would always say, if you're going to take the train, take the train. And she would always be in a cab. And I said, where do you, where are you going next? I'll drive you. <laughs> so this was my opportunity to meet her. And I asked her about, uh, teaching, um, uh, continuing ed courses. I had already been training for the multiple listing service to be a trainer, so Mark, to, training, be a trainer. to be a trainer, a trainer. I was trained, right. Well, I was already an instructor for the multiple listing service and I yeah. used to teach tech before real estate. But Marky was teaching continuing ed. And I thought, what an opportunity. Let yeah, me yeah, take yeah. this lady where she wants to go. Right. So I right. This is how you, if you want to do something. This is how you how, network. Figure out how you can have that seat at the table. And for me, it was sitting her next to me in the car. That's awesome. So Marky and I uh, met some years ago. And since then, she has helped me. She has connected me with the right people to actually start speaking. And um, we've connected. And sometimes we'll do joint trainings together. Um, when she launched her group, her private uh, membership group last year, yep. um, six and 12, six figures in 12 months, Yes, um, we kind of collaborated. And so now I might coach for her maybe once a month. Right. So, and then Marky launched something with you and that's kind of how we connected. Yes. Okay. Now you said 2001. So you were, you were in real estate before social media really got on the scene, right? Now I can't even remember I'm age, but I know it wasn't 20 years ago that we had Facebook and Instagram and stuff. Yeah. It was like 2000. Well, first of all, I was a part of the older group. So I wasn't among the, the college students that got access to Facebook yeah. and all that stuff. Yeah, yeah. I was on my space only because <laughs> my oldest son was on my space in high school and I just yep. needed to be there. Yeah, yeah. So I think I was pushed to be on Facebook around 2008 because one of the admins said, Hey, Carrie, you need Facebook because you can put your listings there. And I was like, Nope, I don't need that. I don't, I'm, do it. Yep. I don't need to do it. I got this MySpace thing, <laughs> but she pushed me. So I was in the real estate game when we had things called flip phones, and yep. fax machines. Yep. And we used to actually go and negotiate contracts in person. Yeah. Well, I, came in in 2004 or five and we didn't negotiate at the table. Now we're, I'm West coast, you're East coast. So we do things a little bit differently, but, uh, I definitely was around my business partner. Um, at the time when I first got into real estate, I, I don't know why I got a Facebook page. I just must've saw it and like had a page. I've actually seen some of the first posts that I made, you know, when it said like, what are you doing today or something? You're like, the way you talk is like in third person on your post. It's so embarrassing. But I was like, you have to get on Facebook because he was really, um, he was really in the community and he didn't need stuff like that. But I was like, this will boost it even more. Like business just came to him because he used to do hair prior. And we, oh. a, we, right. So it was like a total, he, he doesn't have to do anything for marketing. It's so annoying. But so I was like, you got to get on Facebook. And then of course, immediately, you know, that kind of took off for us. But 
So when you first, so when you first got on Facebook, you were using it for business right away. So I was using it for personal because okay, I told you I was a twin. <laughs> I'm telling you, I probably had more friends pretty quick, but we were, uh, it was our, one of our high school reunions <laughs> and we were, you, so I had built out the high school. Uh, it was, we didn't have business pages then. Right. So it was a personal page and I actually just for owned that. my high school just so it was that. <laughs> It was connecting with friends and I loved high school. My twin sister, maybe not so much, right. but I was on there just because I thought this was cool and I could connect with people. And it gave me an opportunity to talk to people about real estate. Right. Right. So it wasn't even about building a business. It was connecting. Connecting. See, and that's where like, that's what people need to hear. And it, it, it can get really convoluted. Like everybody is telling everybody how they should market and what they should do. And this is how you should run your business. And I think that it always, it always comes back down to connecting. And, um, when I say networking, I mean, connecting, when I say marketing, I mean, connecting, it's all about the relationships, the bottom line, because we know returning customer. Well, I call them customers now because of the store, <laughs> but clients there, it's the same thing. And when you have that relationship and that connection, you know, it's, it's about trust. And that's always one of the first things that people, you know, want to have when it comes to their, their realtor or mortgage broker, whomever in the real estate community. And I've learned that it's the same way, even now realtors are my customers, but I still have to gain their trust in the same way because that's how they operate their business. So it's been really interesting to see that kind of shift for me as a realtor. But I also know that you really like to, you know, education obviously is, it's kind of in your blood uh, and your sister is in education as well. So I can kind of see how that works out for you. But new agents obviously is the first thing that comes to mind when you're thinking about education. However, people that have been in the business a long time, like don't get it twisted. We all need refreshing and catching up with stuff. And we're constantly learning. I there's definitely a shift. Like everything is changing so fast when it comes to social media and marketing and all that. So let's go back to talking about how, what you're doing. I feel like it's like you're doing your part to educate new agents and agents in general on how to, I don't want to say organize their marketing, but how to make it work for them and actually how to freaking do it because that's nine tenths of the battle. It's like, how does this thing work? And I'll tell you, Reels is not my friend. I can't stand it and I have to do it for business. But so that's where I'm going to be selfish and pick your brain with that part. But I want to talk about the education side and kind of what you're doing um, to uh, to make that happen. So let me say this. <laughs> when I got into the real estate industry, I had actually started in 97. I worked for a builder and I only did it because work because I was buying a townhouse and I thought this is the coolest thing ever. And then I, every, I was bringing all my friends to buy townhouses and in, in our license with our license law, you could only get a referral up to about 1500 a year. And I'm like, this isn't working. How can I get paid? Oh. So, so, and, and the one thing I, the reason why I got into the business is I thought this could be explained better. So for me, when I first started, it was, it was the client. I thought I could do a better job. Even and my real estate agent was fabulous but I felt like the loan process, no one explained to me that I could buy the house until I got yep. the keys. Like I didn't, I didn't get it. <laughs> and you would think, I mean, I always lived in a house growing up. I just didn't get it. No. So that's what put me on to getting into the business. And then when I got licensed, they didn't tell you when you took this really hard test, you wrote a really big check, you studied light, you studied law that now you had to learn how to do the business. Yep. And I was just thrown in. And let's be clear. I'm the person that needed a paycheck. I didn't want to have to go back to real work. Yeah. And I'm sure, full disclosure, I violated license law. I mean, I'm sure I did. And that's why, because of the way I came in, I wanted to make sure that now, because I own my own brokerage now, a boutique brokerage in um, the Western suburbs of Illinois, I wanted to make sure that when I hire an agent, love the new agents because they don't know what they don't know. Yeah. And they're willing to listen to what I train them to do, but I can keep them from making a mistake, but I can motivate you to get up, get dressed, put in the work and yes. make it a living and yes. help the, in the consumer. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Quick question. How, what percentage just off the top of your head guessing, do you think have 
of, of realtors have the same exact story as you do. I just got thrown into the business. I didn't know what was happening. If you had to guess, how many agent percentage wise do you think that happens to? I'm, I'm just going to guess. I'm going to say 75%. We should go yeah. do that research. We should go do the research on in our marketplaces. How many have boutique brokerages Yeah. and how many companies and how many agents just got thrown in? Because here's what I know. When I got licensed in 2001, the person that my agent, I was like, I'm going to come work for you. And she was, her name was Vivian. And she, and she happened to be an instructor. She was like, nope, Carrie, you can't work for me. Go work for a big box brokerage because I don't have the bandwidth to train you. Yep. And I was like, okay, great. I called like four brokerages. One called me back. It was the one, it was the largest still, I think in the world, family owned businesses. Wow. And I, I liked the collaboration. I learned a lot. Um, you know, I know that today the, the playing field has been leveled, but it would be cool to know the data on how many boutique brokerages are out there yep. and how many agents just got thrown in. Because I am clear that there are some agents that get into the business because their moms were in the business, their dads were in the business, or they started working for a, um, you know, commercial rental company, yep. or they did property, ma- they work for a property management company, or maybe they even work for a builder. Yeah. Because you can work for a builder and not be licensed in some states. Yeah, 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 yeah. But you also, it's that's a totally different business. Like you're learning everything completely differently. You're not getting paid the same way. You know, commission, I, I hate the word hustle. I'm trying to think of something else. But, you know, when you, especially when you first get into the business as a new agent, I mean, shoot, you have to make a living. And I think that that's also part of the issue with the structure in real estate is that when you do get thrown in, you don't have the tools, you don't, your, your money management probably isn't great because you probably came from a paycheck every other week or whatever. And now you have to, now you get a check and you're like, woohoo. And then you don't think about the taxes and the business and the market, like all of that side of it just doesn't get taught. And same with you, you know, people, especially with new agents, there are companies that do handle new agents a lot better and can give them the time and have the bandwidth and have the education in place. But you are a little bit of a combination of all of those things because you have your own brokerage, you have your, your agents and you are educating them and you're kind of going even a little bit more above and beyond, I will say, than probably most boutique. Again, I'm West Coast, you're East Coast, it's a little different, but I don't hear many of the things that we talked about earlier about what you're doing for your agents. So I really want to hear about this because I think that this is something that more brokerage owners, even myself, should be doing for um, for our agents. So what are the, some of the things that you do as a brokerage owner? So because I came from tech, once upon a time, I used to edit television for a living. So I get the reels thing. I mean, like I get Cheater. the video. I, I used to edit the background. Um, I'm also the real estate minute for my local association on the radio. So oh my before, goodness. Yes. Yeah, so I love so that. I, I come from, I come from tech and I used to work for a, uh, a company that used to have demo equipment in Canada and like four locations in, in the States. So I, I come from tech and I used to teach like the Microsoft products. So I, so for me, I get it. That's your wheelhouse. So, and I used to be an admin. So I get the whole business side of it. And my undergrad is, is business administration. So when I think about our agents and here, and here's what's hard. Cause you said, a, you said something really big. You just didn't say it like this <laughs> is we used to get a paycheck, but no one told us we were going to quit our 40 hour a week job to now work 80. Right. Right. Yep. So what I do for the agents and they still have to show up. The hardest part in this is you have to show up. Yeah. And I was having office hours today with the agents and one of the agents, she was like, I, I really want to go back to work. And I was like, well, tell me about you want to go back to work. And she was like, I'm going to, I could team up with another agent and they're going to pay her, you know, Monday through Friday, she's going to work nine to six. And I'm like, so tell me what you did today and yesterday. And she was, he paused. She was like, I get it. She was <laughs> not putting in the work. Right. So what I like to do for the agents and I, and in a, in a, in, you know, in, in a, in a world of where we're shifting and a pandemic and COVID yeah. I was already doing some certain things. So this is what I do. I was already training in person, but I, I use a platform called workplace and it's owned by Facebook. 
And now you can now besides, you know, and I'm not here to tell anybody what they should use, but you could literally use Facebook groups and train your agents because they have what are called guides or learning sections. Yep. But Workplace is a separate platform just for business. So in order to compete with the bigger brokerages of the world, mm-hmm. I needed an intranet. So Workplace gives me the ability to have online learning. So, so you can go cool. learn whenever you want. And I, um, I'll do office hours and I do, and I'll, you can join me live in the class or you can come back and watch the replay. So a lot of new agents, they either have a full-time job or, and they're, or they're, I call them dual career now, now, because I have one agent that has done one deal a month since she started in January, 2020. And she is in the military. And I'm like, wow, there's no more part-time anymore. If you put in the work, you can really do it. Now she said, Carrie, I don't recommend it. Cause she's exhausted. <laughs> yep. <laughs> right. Because it, I mean, it, it still is a lot of work, but you can make a living. So forget the word hustle. You can make a living part-time dual career or full-time. If you get up, get dressed and go to work. Cause there is no inbox. And so this is what I'd like to say. So people could envision this when you work for a company and your staff, someone drops off the papers and they give you your inbox. They tell you what to do. Yep. But in real estate, you have to be the person to create it. So I like to teach my agents how to create that inbox. And I don't care if it's, now listings do still come from the mailbox. If you look at Pew Research, P-E-W Research, or you look at the NAR stats, the uh, average or median um, first-time home buyer is like 32, 33. So that's the millennial. But yes. the people that are listing homes are my age. Yep. So I'm not saying I'm 50, but I could be. <laughs> I am. And I mean, and so, and if that's the case, Pew Research, 29 and under, they're all on social media. Their mobile devices are an appendage, right? The kindergartners know how to use a mobile phone. They know how to use tech. Yep. Eventually, I could see a true switch where people are hiring us from social media. Now, as soon as you, we went to the NAR conference, we know people were, you know, that's when your phone blew up and I had two referrals. Like, yep. I'm like, oh my gosh, I'm driving to the airport and someone wants to list their house it's every I mean, time there's, there's truth in or they I get a message and actually I got a dm a direct message on facebook so do I still believe you can make a make money on social media yes but I also know listings still come from the mailbox so when I say there is no inbox I literally create the marketing for our agents they don't have to use it but um I give them you, you I, t- I create your reels on instagram which could also be used on tiktok I create a story. I create your Instagram post. I create a newsletter. If you want to do direct mail, I create a letter. If you want to target cancels and expireds, I teach you how to target cancels and expireds every day. I teach you how to look at the bottom of the market. I teach you how to use data. And then I, we, even today I went back to, I just need you to do one thing because we pulled her marketplace. I said, okay, so you want to go back to work and we're still in a seller's market at every price point and every bedroom count. Yep. And we looked up the numbers. I said, in your area right now, there are 85 properties in her city that have no mortgage, four bedrooms, and the average sales price w- or medium was like 346.5 or something like that. Yeah. I said, how many of those do you need a month? She's like, one. <laughs> like, <laughs> if you did, and we did the numbers, if she did 14 a year, you know, not look at, at, and you know, we know commissions are different everywhere for anti yeah. purposes. Yeah. If she did um, 14 deals a year and that's comes out to about 5 million in volume at 2.5% without even doing a split, that's 125,000 gross. I'm like, are you doing just as well as you would have if you went back to work? She was like, yes. I said, so you have to get up and no one wants to turn their camera on, right? We're on Zoom. Right. I'm like, every day I get up, I try to work out. That's the goal. But I get up like I'm going to work. You have to get up and go to work. Yep. And so that's what I train the agents to do. And the agents that show up and do the work, they'll make a living. Okay. So a couple things. People don't use research enough. I don't think it's not talked about a ton. And you mentioned it a couple of times. We actually said it too. like, okay, statistically, I wonder how many people just get thrown into the business. How, what, what would you say? if somebody isn't using research or numbers, um, or stats or whatever in their business, what's kind of a couple of words of advice, a on where to find those and B what they should be looking for. 
especially in their marketing. Like you rattled off a couple of really, really good tidbits there. I hope you guys heard that about you went back and looked at, and it was personal to her in her area. And I think that that's really important, but I think where I would get stuck and paralyzed is where do I start? Just like you said, it's always the hardest part. So what would you recommend for people? Like, how do you, what, what's that process for you when you start to think about, okay, I need to research this and grab the numbers. And what does that look like? So once upon a time, because my husband got licensed in 2017, I knew he wasn't going to do the research. So I literally did a fill in the blank on tell the story with data. Uh, so love that. I know. One That's day a good one. In my spare time. So I, uh, and I actually have a continuing ed course approved in the state of Illinois for this. So this is what I'm going to tell you to do. I've been using the MLS now for 20 years. Yeah. So I'm going to challenge everyone to go back to their MLS or their local associations and find out what you, what training you already get. The second thing is, is figure out the data tools and I'm going to tell you what to look for. I want everyone, everyone to figure out the turnover rate in the communities they work in. So if the turnover rate is every 10 years, you need another community, yep. period. It doesn't mean yeah. you can't stay in your own neighborhood, but you might need another community. Yeah. So figure out how fast homes are selling. The next thing I need you to do is figure out which home is selling the fastest. And it could be based on bedrooms. It could be based on price. Price point, so, yep. Right, pick something. Yep. And then look to see what inventory is selling. So for example, in the city we looked at today, we figured out that all price points were selling, all bedroom counts were selling, but the inventory in the city was typically a three bedroom or a four bedroom. Oh, wow. So she could sell a four or a three, but if she targeted four, she was going to get paid more. <laughs> yep. But if she targeted the three, she would have to sell 20 houses a year versus 14. Oh, well, I guess what's it? six, six more is that's okay. Right. So I would say to everyone, figure out the best house to sell in the community, figure out what the turnover rate is and no specific order, figure out if you're in a seller's market and figure out the inventory. When you understand that data, you will not only help, you'll actually work smarter, but then when someone says, hey, Carrie, what's the market like? I can now say what the market is like. Yep. And let me give every real estate agent a tip. Some, we all want to be acknowledged, even if you don't want to do video, even if you don't want to talk to someone live, but you might be willing to be interviewed. Yep. Here's what I learned quickly. When I became an expert at the data, I get emails all the time to be interviewed. Now don't, here's, I'll be clear. I, I was asked to be interviewed by the Chicago Tribune and they wanted to interview me in my market. I really don't sell anymore. We have 31 agents as of yesterday. Congrats. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. It's That's a lot a of pleasure. work, but. I know. As, thank you. So when I got the email, I said, you know what, as much as I would love to take this interview, let me find the best agent. And it wasn't even someone in my office. So, and then I had another opportunity to be uh, interviewed about appraisals. I'm like, I could do it, but I'm not the expert. I know who the expert is. So just think about it. They're calling me because yes. I'm explaining the data. Yeah. And you have organically, <clears throat> you've organically created that for yourself because that's what you're good at and that's, and you're data driven and that really, really works for you. So I say that for two reasons. A, you definitely need to have that data and at least know the basics of what is going on in your market, in your area that you, and, and people are like, you know, realtors are like, oh, I sell everywhere, but you probably have a, a niche thing, or maybe you should, because it can get very overwhelming. But also too, is that the whole making a living, I really love hearing that instead of, you know, I don't want to say the wrong thing, but when it comes to commission, first of all, people just think that realtors, you know, make millions of dollars and, you know, all you do is look at pretty houses and all that, but this and is it's not for, HGTV. Right. And not only that, but I think that it, I think some agents feel bad sometimes because of that, the way that, you know, the world looks at real estate. I don't really know, but I, I, maybe I'm just speaking for myself. Um, but money was always an issue for me and I almost felt bad, you know, taking a commission. That's why you would lower your commission rate or somebody would ask you for a discount and, uh, well, so-and-so said they would do it for this much or you're my friend or family or whatever. And 
you said a couple of really great things about value. And when you align yourself that way and you become the expert in the data, people aren't going to ask you for that kind of stuff because they know that you're the person to go to and you're going to get it done and you're going to do it well. And so I think that there is something to be said about all of that. And that is all encompassing. And then it comes right back to that commission. The bottom line is you have to make a living. We're not doing this for free. I mean, how do you feed your family and yourself and shelter? You know, all that stuff. It's just like, there's just this perception and it drives me crazy. And I know I'm guilty of it sometimes too, because of how I, you know, I was a single mom. It was feast or famine. I come from the restaurant business and I vowed to never do that. And then I became a real estate agent. I'm like, here I am, but I never learned about the business side or any of that. So it really is important. And it's never too late to shift. Like, I was a realtor for probably 15 or 16 years when I finally did a money coach thing and it changed everything about what I thought about money. And I had no idea. And it all comes down to childhood and how you grew up around it and how your family manages it, how you talk about it, all of that stuff. So if that is something that we you probably that, read the same book, <laughs> girl, I, I actually, I hired, I hired a money coach and it was like therapy. Basically, you know, and you just talk, talk about your family and ask certain questions. And as I'm answering the, her questions, I was like, oh my gosh, I literally was having epiphany after a light bulb moment after a light bulb moment. It was incredible. So I definitely recommend that. But all of those things that you just said about data and, and being the expert and also people are coming to you for interviews and doing those kinds of things, because the more you do it, the more you're out there, the better you get at it. And you want to be the expert in your community. You want to be the person that people are coming to you for, for advice, information, real estate stuff. And a lot of times agents will say, well, Carrie, you just get the numbers. I hated math in high school. I hated math in college. <laughs> hated and math as a realtor. <laughs> right. I hated math as a new agent. Yep. But I remember in college when I took statistics, the professor worked for McDonald's Corporation. Oh, wow. And he explained knew how he knew the numbers and he explained the data from a perspective of why McDonald's chooses certain locations. Yeah. I, I mean, he made me lean in and learn. Yeah. And so that's when I realized if you know the numbers and you know why from from your paycheck, knowing how much money you should put aside, you know, you know, knowing how we think about money, it made me want to learn it. So and the number one reason why I learned it was for all of the real estate agents out there. I was like, I don't get it. So I'm going to bring it down to a level that is like a fifth grader. So yeah. we, so I can explain it. And agents are like, Carrie, I get it. And you know, yeah. our, I can talk about 16 different metrics, but I just gave you a few. What's the median sales price? What house is set? Which, what's the inventory? Like what's the most, what properties are selling? And it could be based on bedroom count. And what's the month's supply? And some people just need to go look up the formula for absorption rate. My first broker, she was like, here's the math. And I was like, I don't get it. Let me open up a Microsoft Excel spreadsheet because I used to be an admin. <laughs> and I built out this, the formula. And so then I could just do the math myself before we had all of these different tools from the multiple listing service. I was yeah. like, oh, I got this. Yeah. So now I can explain to people how it works. And if you were to call me and say, Carrie, how's the market? I'm like, we, we might have a shift, but we're still in a seller's market. I would say, if you're thinking about listing, you got to list. You have to list because in my MLS, I can do something called reverse prospecting. And I can tell you right now, I got to think about the name of the city, but I, I think it might've been, might've been like Joliet. If I listed a house at whatever price point, I'd have a thousand people looking at it because we can oh, figure wow. it out based on the automated search. Right. So when you figure out how to explain data and you explain it to the seller, we need to just explain it and shut up. Stop right. talking. Just yes, <laughs> exactly. Exactly. And also too, when you're talking about data and you're talking about, you know, it might be bedrooms, it might be price point, you probably know your community and who you're selling to. And it could be land. It could be the size of the you know, the property, or it has to have a shop on it or whatever. You probably know those things. You have all this information in your head. You just don't know how to get it out there and make it work for you, you know? And so I think that that's really important to just kind of stop and think about it. And sometimes it, realtors are just constantly going, you know, your appointments and 
all of the things, but you have to make time for your business. And so whatever that means, if it's 30 minutes a day that you're just going to figure out what the data is for the month, whatever, you know, and maybe it's different. You just have to make that time for it. So how do you kind of in your real estate business, um, how, how were you structuring the balancing act for you? Cause you're data driven and you're also social media and you love video. Like those are all a really great combination, but it's also not very common. So talk to us about, well, talk to us about reels first, because do I have to, <laughs> you have to, you have to create these reels like TikTok for those of you that know TikTok because Instagram is pushing reels right now. Yep. They are really pushing reels and they're more likely to get watched. Yeah. So do you have to be on the reel? No. My <laughs> if someone could get this, you could create a story on Instagram and just talk for like 30 seconds. And then you can click the little sticker at the top and choose captions and it will automatically build the captions. Then you can download it and then upload it to reels. And then you don't have to do all this crazy pointing like people <laughs> have figured out how to, and I just know how to edit television. I know how it's a layer. If there, if there's audio, there's video, and then there's text layers. Yeah, You don't have to figure it out because you built it in the story. So right. you could post the story, it expires in 24 hours, and then you could repurpose it in a reel because you can create the reel right away and save it as a draft. Yes. So there's a way to do it without working hard. You just got to work smarter. Yes. Yeah. And I'm totally And you could repurpose that. it on TikTok because if you create it in 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 the real oh, you create it's in a your video. story, you download it with the text as a video. And then you didn't if you download it from Reels, it, it has the, the Instagram stamp. Stamp but on if you it. Download yep. it from stories, it doesn't. <laughs> so now you can put it in two places and there you go. Yeah. It's okay. So and also I we are a testament to the whole, what you just said about, you have to do video and reels because our engagement has gone so down because we're not doing reels. And, um, quite honestly, it just comes down to a time thing. Like that stuff takes forever. You just gave me a five minute, like Fix. I can just do it real I'm totally going to do one today and then I will send it. I'll take you in it or something. I don't know, but anyway, you can send it, send, just send it to me. I'll be, you're my accountability coach for my reel right. today. <laughs> and it, I mean, it, when I tell you, cause you did ask a good question about, you know, how reels and, you know, planning, I'm really quick. I, I mean, I'm a quick study because I used to edit television. And so I get it. Yeah. So uh, it really, it, the truth comes down to, you know, you're running a business yeah. and you have to put a date to it. I always tell agents, if you are forced to learn something new and you're a new agent, and if you had a regular job, take out a calendar and put in your job hours. Yeah. Well, let's just say you're a new real estate agent. And you don't have that, but you have to pick up the kids at three o'clock, you know, three, four, five, somebody's cooking dinner unless yep. you're going through the drive through And then maybe every Saturday you get your nails done at 9 a.m. Like yep. put in like block your time. And then you have to figure out when you're going to do the business yes. because when business is good, Zig Ziglar said it you advertise when business is bad, you have to advertise, but you should never get to that point because you're consistent. So I have a, I send my agents an email typically every Monday with an off, old school office PDF calendar that you can download <laughs> and an image and a click through link to workplace. And then our MLS gives every broker owner the ability to put um, bulletins in our MLS. So it pops up on the front page. There's no excuse. Oh, cute. And then I text the agents a few minutes before class. Like, <laughs> right. So I'm very scheduled, very scheduled. So in, and here's the, here's the benefit of being scheduled or you put a date to it. So let's say yeah. Tracy, you're now going to do a reel once a week. Cause if you did it once a week, that's 52 posts a year. Yeah. And you know that you're going to make this post not on a Monday. Cause everybody hates Monday, right? Let's say it's going to be, you figured out your data is on a Wednesday at yeah. eight o'clock at night right? Because this is when real estate agents are checking out all the Scrolling. real estate agents in other states because they're doing luxury yep. and we want to get there too. Yeah. Right. So yep. it's consistency. Pick it, you know, you could build all of your content on a Sunday and then it's just posting. I decided when the pandemic happened, a lot of states shut down. We shut down. Yep. Not every state did. So I decided I was already doing live video. I was already using Zoom. I was already going live on Facebook, but I, my goal was 
Instagram. So I was like, okay, every Friday, 9 a.m., I'm going live central time. And I would have five people watching. And I would just talk. And then now, <laughs> and then I decided, okay, I'm going to put a plan to this. So now I would email you every week. So my, the people that follow me, and then I would post on Facebook. And then, so now I, if I'm not live at 9 a.m., people are like, here, you going live? Here, Where you are you at? Live. Right. And I have, I make a post. And so now I could easily have up to a hundred people watching me every Friday because they expect it. Yep. So if you're consistent, people expect it. If you're doing a direct mail piece once a month, people expect it. Yep. If you are, if you're sending an email uh, marketing, your people expect it. So it's consistency and putting a date to it. Cause now you're holding, if you put it on social media, yep. you're accountable you gotta exactly. go with it. And you've just formed a habit for yourself, which makes things so much easier when it becomes a habit. And it's just something that you do. And you're so right because in the first time, few months, whatever you try it, there's not a lot of people, but it does build consistency. And isn't that what, what every agent wants for their clients is that they expect you to do something, you know, and it, it also just makes it, it's validating for you. Like, okay, you know, it was, I'm so glad I dropped off those 10 pies. It took me, you know, whatever, whatever. One of our agents just dropped off 45. Oh, well, nobody has Lana Rodriguez in Colorado beat. She (laughs) does. She did 300 this weekend, but she also has done like 700 in the past. She's, she has crazy She's one of the mic drop. I'm done marketing. Exactly. Go see Lana Rogri. Watch her. She does the TikToks and all of the things, but she is an organic marketer. She also came to this country and didn't know anybody and built a business off of good old fashioned business cards. Give your business card to everyone. And her first customer was the bank teller that she gave her card to it was the first time. And she was like, this is really awkward, but I'm going to give you my card, even though you didn't ask for it. And sure enough. So you just never know in those habit formings. And also you just, you talked about like time. Uh, I did a time tracker because I was so loaded down every day with stuff. And I realized that one of the, th- one of the things that I was doing was sucking up a lot of my time and I wasn't getting anything back out of it business wise. So I had to stop doing it or mentally, like, you know, if it, if it gives you, maybe it's not great for your business, but maybe it gives you, you know, purpose or whatever it is mentally, then keep those things. But when I wrote it all down, everything that I do every day and went back in my calendar and put them in buckets, it was very obvious on the things that I needed to stop doing. And, Mm -hmm. uh, it freed up time to be able to do other things. So I unfortunately was never like a coach type person. Um, I definitely want to look into that now and having a coach, even just talking like with you and Marky and Marky having a coach and like, you know, big time people having a coach, it's almost, whether it be a therapy session or just running stuff by somebody that's, you know, on the same level as you and wherever you are in your business, you know, those kinds of things are important. So I always encourage like, do what I say, not what I didn't do. (laughs) And you're right about the coach, like, um, and, or just consistently or continually learning something new. I, you know, I I did the Goldman Sachs 10,000 small businesses cohort. Wow. I, and, and then I had, I got an advisor coach advisor yep. coach yeah. <laughs> and, and I, they forced us to look at the money. So whether you're a business owner or an individual agent or a team, it forced me to do a whole forecast, man. I have a spreadsheet that I was like, oh, <laughs> you I did didn't know girl. I could do this. <laughs> exactly. So always investing in yourself. It really makes a big difference. And then, like you said, it's, you know, you have not, cause you ask not if you, you know, you got to consistently ask for the business Yeah, and don't be afraid to get out there as a new agent. Yep. Just ask yeah. the worst thing you could do is mess it all up. Yep. But and next. learn from it and never do that again. Yeah. And right. then you have a good story because doesn't everybody have a story about when they first got into the business or something that they tried and failed at in marketing or whatever. And it's something that, you know, you just have to, it's how you handle it. And a lot of those quotes, you know, come to mind or whatever, when you think about stuff like that, but it's true. And real estate is a hard business. Like it really is. It takes a lot out of you mentally and professionally and all of that stuff. But when you have good information, like you've given us today, these are the kinds of things. And this is why I love doing the podcast. You know, I get something out of it. I, it gets me excited and re-energized about my business as well. And I think that that is something that we all have to seek all of the time. And 
I think with, you know, it comes down to habits that just needs to be one of them too, is taking care of your business and thinking of it that way and doing something, right. maybe tweaking one little thing or whatever to, you know, that wasn't working, but you really like doing it. What can you do to change it? And I think if you just stop and think about it, you'll figure that out, you know, but just like you said, it's doing it is <laughs> over half the battle. You're running a business. You yes. have to treat real estate like a business. Exactly. Exactly. Okay. So you're doing all kinds of things that I need to make sure that we mention. And um, I want to talk first about, well, Smart Girl Media is where, is that your umbrella for all of that's my things? Yeah, that's my, um, that's my blog. Okay. So you're as an instructor, so as a speaker. Okay. And then you've got the Socially Savvy Agent Journal. Yes. Is that, that just released? Long- it's, it's, it's on Amazon. It's so okay. the socially savvy, um, agent journal is a way to help real estate agents go live on social media or get content for a podcast or get content for a blog. It's a way to help you get your ideas out of your head onto paper, onto paper. and then into either the written word or the spoken word. It's kind of a workbook. It is. Yeah. Okay. And then you the classes that you do does that connect with the journal as well yes so i i mean i teach a few uh classes i'm i'm really an expert when it comes to digital marketing and analytics um and so i try to go i i'm i'm very consistent with going live on social media and i like to focus on not just new agents but agents that want to, you know, you're a seasoned agent and you need to make a shift because you weren't using technology. So my, my focus is the agent that really wants to learn to earn. Nice. Okay. So is that on Facebook? It's all, I mean, smartgirlmedia.com. And if you, I mean, I'm literally Carrie J O little everywhere, except for Twitter. (laughs) Somehow I created a Carrie Joe little, and I need to merge these accounts. I'm Carrie J little. I don't know what I did. This was years ago. (laughs) Something I know. Right. Right. One of those things that you got to take care of and it takes a back burner but when you go live is that on Facebook I okay so I go live consistently on Instagram every Friday 9 a.m central oh and then I always have the replay and so on my goal for 2022 is to pick a day to do 10 minute sessions on it'll be Facebook YouTube and LinkedIn all at the same time with with restream because you could use do use restream I just need to pick a day I do go live okay but it's not consistent. And then to really build out TikTok. <laughs> let me know how that works out. I'll let if you, you know. need a guinea pig, all things right. real estate really could use some help. <laughs> it's so I just bad. told you how. Story on Instagram, <laughs> download it, reels, TikTok. I'm going to do it. I have to. Like it, 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 a lot of our business comes from social media and Instagram and all that. So it's affecting I got our the business. Idea. What this is what we're going to do. We're just going to put on a pair of jeans. We're going to take your hoodies. We're going to take your t-shirts and your hats. And we're going to do that TikTok or reel where people change their clothes every day. Yeah. <laughs> we're going to just be in a new hoodie. That's what we're going to do. We means you, right? Right. I'm going to figure that out. In my Cause you know, time. and that was another thing too, like getting creative. Uh, I definitely was like, had a whole plan since I don't love doing the videos and stuff. I was like, I'm just going to ask my customers to do it. And then we'll use them as our ads, but I just haven't, I haven't gotten around to doing that. So you'll be my first one. So yeah, I'm gonna, yeah, me. yeah. I'm, you'll I, be I, my, TikTok. maybe I can get Marky to do it with me. Yes. You you'll know, be my we'll first different TikTok outfits. Ad. Right. I'll go pull out all my gear. I'll get my mug and, and, you know, and, and I need you to put the words on both sides of the mug just for me. It is that the one you have girl, I did not realize you had been a customer for that long. That was years ago. The want to sell a house mug with the blue inside. Oh, okay. I need to girl. get another. Okay. I'm, 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 I'll go on the website. Cause I was like, I'm holding like, wait a minute. I can't go. Live I know like this. And then it's backwards or whatever. Cause it's coffee with Carrie. And I'm like, <laughs> I got to hold it with my left hand, which kind of works out because it's flipped anyway on Instagram. Yeah. No mugs come both sides now before back in the day when we first started doing them, you only had one side and it was like, Oh my gosh, do you do the left or the right? And then it was a total cluster. The outside, people, right. Yeah. yeah. But that's only if you're one, one of the other handed. Right. Oh, right. both, right. See, okay, these are the it. things I have to think about instead of like, you know, selling $400,000 houses. I have to worry about what side the text is on a mug. <laughs> my life. Real, okay. Real, and then real uh, life. Yes, exactly. And um, agent journey. That's the last thing that we wanted to chat about. 
So the Agent Journey is a new membership that will officially start in January, and okay. it is a uh, focused membership to train real estate agents. Now, take seasoned agents, take any agent, but my focus is the agent that really wants to shift from real work, real job life to building a real estate brand, whether it's you know running your own business, whether it's being on a team. Um, and maybe even opening a brokerage because I opened a brokerage because I was doing so much training. Yep. Yep. Okay. I just want to personally say, I'm so excited that we got to meet in person. We've talked and known each other for a little bit, but meeting you at NAR, uh, really was like, okay, now I have a new friend. Like I just, this is the kind of stuff that makes me happy in my business. And so I really appreciate you and taking the time to like, you were so busy during our, both you and Marky to come see us at the booth and, you know, and meet and chat. And I got to meet your husband and you bought some cute hoodies that you're wearing right now that you guys can't see her want to buy a house camo. Love it. But I just want to say again, doesn't that come back to the relationships and the connections? And so I really appreciate that we got to, to meet and now we have a relationship and now I have a new friend and I'm going to do reels and I'm going to do the things and get motivated because of you. Yep. And thank you so much. Cause we, we, all we know is as real estate agents is we want the real estate here. Yes. Yes. And I'm going to give it to you. Cause you know, that's what I do now. I sell hoodies instead of houses. Oh, that's a, that's a new tagline. I gotta think about that. Okay. All right, Carrie. So smartgirlmedia.com. Yes. Okay. And, yeah. And I'm I'm Smart Girl Media everywhere and Carrie Joe Little everywhere. Okay, good. And we'll have all of the links and the things and all that. So I really appreciate you. Thanks for being here today. Thanks for having me. Mm-hmm.